In this video, we are going to look into some of the common Fourier transform pairs. So more specifically, we have these two transformations. The first one is the Fourier transformation and the other one is the inverse Fourier transform. So in Fourier series and over here, we can say this is our synthesis expression and this is our analysis expression. So let us start with the very common signal that is a direct delta function. If we have a signal x of t which is simply delta of t. So what would be the Fourier transform of this signal? That would be x of omega. So as per the transformation expression over here, now we would have minus infinity to infinity x of t is delta of t e to the power minus j omega t dt. And this by definition of delta function is simply exponential to the power 0 because of the time and then we would be left with an integration from minus infinity to infinity delta of t dt. So this is simply 1 and this is also 1. So therefore our transform is just 1 for all values of omega. So what does this signify? In time domain we had an impulse delta of t and this impulse had the amplitude of infinity and width of 0 but the strength or the area was simply 1. So if we are taking the Fourier transform of this signal so in frequency domain this was time domain so in frequency domain that is in omega radians per second we are having a value of consistent 1 from minus infinity to infinity. So this means that in the time domain if the signal is time limited the magnitude in frequency would be unlimited. Now let us extend our discussion further and say we have a spectrum now which is an impulse that is we have g of omega g is a new signal and this is simply delta of omega that is at zero radians per second we have an impulse which is having a strength of one and we are interested in taking the inverse Fourier transform of this signal that is we are interested in g of t so from the inverse Fourier transform expression we can say that this g of t would be equivalent to 1 over 2 pi integration from minus infinity to infinity g of omega which is simply delta of omega e to the plus j omega t d omega so we have 1 over 2 pi and the solution of this integration is simply e to the power 0 t because omega is 0 at delta of omega and then the integration itself with respect to delta of omega d omega now this again is simply 1 and this is also 1 so as g of t is 1 over 2 pi that is when we have delta of omega the inverse relationship is with respect to time we have a constant signal which is 1 over 2 pi for all values of t now this is dual with uh, the earlier interpretation that we did for an impulse in the time domain so if we have an impulse in the time domain in the frequency domain interpretation we have we have a constant value across all frequencies but on the other hand if we have an impulse in the frequency domain then we have a constant value multiplied by 1 over 2 pi in the time domain 
so this indicates something that we have a similarity between time and frequency so this is called the duality property i would firmly prove this property in a later video so also on a side note if we have a signal which is infinite in time we have a finite bandwidth and if we have infinite bandwidth so this indicates that we have a finite time domain signal now let us come back to this function and define some very significant transformations between time and frequency domain so presently we have in time domain and frequency domain in the frequency domain we have a direct delta function that is delta of w as mentioned over here so let's bring this 1 over 2 pi to the right side so this will become 2 pi delta of omega and this is with respect to omega in the time domain we simply have now 1 where we have moved this 1 over 2 pi to the other side of transformation so let us say we give a frequency shift that is we now have the same signal but now it is shifted to say omega naught that is we have 2 pi delta of omega minus omega naught so let us see what does this mean and how we can translate into time domain so this means that in time domain we would have x of t 1 over 2 pi integration from minus infinity to infinity this signal that is 2 pi delta of omega minus omega naught e to the power plus j omega t dt so as this 2 pi would cancel with this 2 pi and we would be left with e to the power j omega naught from the property of direct delta function times minus infinity to infinity delta of omega minus omega naught this was d omega so this is now d omega now this is simply one and we just have e to the power j omega naught t this is our new x of t or simply this is cos omega naught t plus j sub omega naught t so just considering the real part of it that is the cos function so we now have an oscillating sinusoid in the time domain and this is our cos omega naught t so therefore e to the power j omega naught t has a transform pair which is 2 pi delta of omega minus omega naught again this is just an extension of our direct delta function we have shifted it in frequency and observed that shift over here some very simple and basic extensions again that what would be the Fourier transform of cos omega naught t and what would be the Fourier transform of sin omega naught t so let us start with cos omega naught t this by definition is equal to 1 by 2 e to the power plus j omega naught t plus 1 by 2 e to the power minus j omega naught t but from here we can directly take uh, the Fourier transform so the Fourier transform of this part would be this two would cancel off with this two so we would have a pi delta of omega minus omega naught and from here we have a plus 
pi delta of omega plus omega naught so that is in the frequency domain in terms of omega we have this placed over here that is an impulse at position of omega naught and this is having an amplitude of pi that is this is pi delta of omega minus omega naught and similarly this is over here which is at minus omega naught and this is pi delta of omega plus omega naught similarly for sine function we have 1 over 2j e to the power plus j omega naught t minus 1 by 2j e to the power minus j omega naught t now the transformation for this is simply 1 over j pi delta of omega minus omega naught minus 1 over j delta of omega plus omega naught or we can just simplify it and say that j is equal to minus 1 over j so from here we have a minus j pi delta of omega minus omega naught and a plus j pi delta of omega plus omega naught so as in the frequency domain the spectrum is over here we have a minus j pi delta of omega minus omega naught and this is this was at omega and this is at minus omega naught which is coming from here that is j pi delta of omega plus omega naught so the direct delta function and sum of its extensions now let us move towards the unit step function now we have a signal x of t and this is a unit step function u of t so my intention in this video is to discuss what would be the Fourier transform of this signal and how it would be different from the Laplace transform so we have x of t and say we take the Laplace transform and the Fourier transform and visualize the differences for the unit step function so let us start with taking the Laplace transform that is we have x of s which is minus infinity to infinity x of t e to the power minus s t dt now by inserting the value of x of t that is the unit step function the integration would start from zero now and it would terminate at infinity and we would have e to the power minus s t dt and from calculus this is simply minus 1 by s and so if we put t equal to 0 so we would have a minus 1 but if we put t equal to infinity so in that case we would have a 0 only if the real part of s is greater than 0 so that is the condition of Laplace so in short the Laplace transform is simply 1 over s and the region of convergence is real part of s is greater than 0 so in Fourier transform we often say that we set s which is equal to sigma plus j omega and if we set sigma equal to 0 we converge to Fourier transform so we are going to test that so we are interested in the Fourier transform of unit step function which is minus infinity to infinity x of t e to the power minus j omega t dt but our x of t was simply unit step function so now again the limit would start from 0 and it it would terminate at infinity so we would have e to the power minus j omega t dt and this is simply minus 1 over j omega and when time is 0 we have a minus 1 
but when time is infinity we have a value here which is a cost and we are unsure what it is in the laplace domain over here we were able to solve it by means of the region of convergence but in the fourier transform we are unable to do it so in short we have a transform which is x of omega that is 1 over j omega plus this value that is some constant so there is a difference in this constant which was not available over here so why do we have this this is because the definition of signal is a unit step function and this signal is not converging as t tends to infinity so this is not integrable so therefore it does not satisfy the first condition of the Dirichlet conditions so this is a very important definition and a classification that if you do not have a converging signal and a signal which is not integrable then you just cannot set sigma equal to zero and move from the Laplace domain to the Fourier domain but if the signal is converging for example in the later case we would have a decaying exponential which is converging so in that case we can in fact put sigma equal to zero and converge from Laplace transform to Fourier transform so make sure that you follow these conditions when doing the transformation from Laplace transform to Fourier transform now we have found out a very generic form of the Fourier transform but we have not found out the value of this constant c so in short if x of t is a unit step function then what would be the Fourier transform of this signal so let us try to find the Fourier transform for this signal the unit step function starts at 0 and it is consistently 1 for positive values of t this is our x of t now say we take a differential of this function that is we have d by dt x of t so in that case we have a discontinuity over here and hence at time 0 we would have an impulse which is having a strength of 1 so this is simply delta of t so delta of t has a Fourier transform so this is 1 now from the integration property now using the integration property we can move from this signal to actually get x of t which is u of t that is if you integrate this you will get back the unit step function and the Fourier transform for that now for simplification let us say this is g of t so has this would be capital G of Omega so from the integration property we have an integration from minus infinity to T G of tau D tau and this is paired with 1 over J Omega G of Omega plus g capital g of 0 that is when this is having a value of 0 times delta of omega so note that this is simply our x of t which is over here now g of omega from here it is simply 1 so we have 1 over g omega plus pi and then g of 0 argument but g is equal to 1 for all values of omega so we simply have a 1 here and then it will be multiplied by an impulse at origin that is delta of omega so hence we have found out the transform pair of unit step function that is u of t and its transform is simply 1 over j omega plus pi delta of omega 
now this is that constant value that we have originally presented when we were discussing the Fourier transform and its comparison with the Laplace transform now in a third example we have a signal x of t which is e to the power minus a t u of t and a is greater than zero so this means that we have a signal which is converging as the time tends to infinity so since it follows the Dirichlet conditions so we can easily move from Laplace domain to the Fourier domain by setting sigma equal to zero but we would rather follow a conventional approach and we will directly find the transform of this function that is we are interested in x of omega which is minus infinity to infinity x of t that is e to the power minus a t u of t times the exponential signal itself e to the power minus j omega t dt now this unit step function would again change the limit and we would have e to the power minus a plus j omega t dt and the solution of this would be a minus 1 over a plus j omega and then the exponential that is e to the power minus a plus j omega t when t is infinity and 0 so since this is converging hence we would have when t is infinity we have a zero because a is positive and when t is zero we simply have a minus one so therefore we have a function that is x of omega which is one over a plus j omega so on a side note if this a is complex that is a belongs to complex numbers then in that case the real part of that a this should be positive so if this is positive then we'll again have the same result as this one now let us conclude our discussion by including the magnitude and phase spectrum of x of omega So the magnitude spectrum is expressed over here that is in the denominator this would be squared and this would be squared which is mentioned over here that is we have 1 over a square plus b square the real part and the complex part whereas for the phase we have a minus 10 inverse this b by a minus 10 inverse b by a so these are plotted over here when omega is equal to 0 that is this point at this point we simply have a 1 over under root a square or simply 1 over a which is expressed over here so as we increase the frequency the angular frequency so the denominator would become more stronger so hence we have the decay as observed over here and we also have a symmetry on the left side so on the other hand we have the phase plot so at omega equal to 0 10 inverse 0 is simply 0 and we have this function and as we increase the frequency because of this minus we would have this curve which identifies that the phase would change from 0 to minus pi by 2 and this is an odd function which passes through an origin and then we have the phase which is approaching plus pi by 2 as the value of omega goes to minus infinity so magnitude and phase plots find real good applications when we are designing the filters